You're watching In Technology, a video cast where you can get smarter about cybersecurity, sustainability, and technology. Hi, welcome to today's podcast, In Technology. I'm your host, Camille Moorhart, and I have with me another podcast host and a colleague at Intel, software architect and software evangelist, Tony Monkolsmai. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Camille, twice for both of us. So we thought it would be fun to get you on and understand your experience wearing the Apple Vision Pro over the last, how long have you had it now? Today is Thursday, so I've been using it for three days on and off for work and for watching movies and things like that. How can we see an image of you? How did it acquire that image? What they actually do is they set up what they call a persona, which allows you to create this kind of digital image that we're seeing of me, and it, it works with kind of as the front-facing camera. And so you go in you to the settings. You say you want to set up a persona through holding up your hands so you guys can see as I hold up my hand. You can see my hands and it's tracking what my fingers are doing. You can see it in the dual shot, hopefully. And then they actually have you take it off and point the, the front of the Apple Vision Pro at you. And the nice thing there is it has so many cameras that it uses for the hand tracking and to be able to see the world around you normally. They just use that depth camera to capture your image. And then they ask you to smile uh, with your teeth out so you can see my teeth, everybody. They ask you to raise your eyebrows so you can see I can raise my eyebrows, lower my eyebrows. So they, they have, use motion tracking for that. Um, I think they use like the actuating sensors, like the accelerometers that are actually in the device to track that on my face. I've put some thin glasses on my avatar because I normally wear glasses, but you can't quite see that. Do you think that the avatar looks like you? So I've tried this with a bunch of people who have known me for a long time, and my parents thought it was weird and didn't look like me at all. My friends, who I've known since like third grade, thought it actually looked pretty good. It does a really good job of capturing my mouth movements, I think, and my facial gestures. It just doesn't look quite as natural, I think, as people are used to. It definitely has that little bit of uncanny valley feeling. Yeah, I don't feel like it looks just like you. And I actually feel torn as to whether I should look at you with a mask on or, or look at your avatar. Yeah, and I think that the the mask is also disconcerting. So that that's another thing with this technology. Obviously, we've seen it with other VR headsets, the Quest, etc., where this is an issue. Although this one is made a little bit more to be worn around because the the quality of the pass through is a lot better, a lot brighter. And you've seen people, I'm sure, on X and all social media wearing it around. And I think that's a little more disconcerting to people. I actually took it to. A car dealership where I had to get something done on my car and I intentionally brought it just to see what the reaction would be from people and other than one or two people who kind of stared at me for like 10 seconds and then ignored me completely for the next hour and a half I think most people were probably just comfortable ignoring it but it also felt totally awkward from my point of view trying to, to wear this in public and, and watch a movie essentially. From your perspective the user experience from being inside of that is you're actually seeing video of the world in front of you, not the world itself. Everything is pixelated. So as someone who still writes code and I spend a lot of time in front of a monitor, I, I think it's very hard to use for something like that. Like I can't see the text clearly on my screen because it's actually coming through the cameras. The resolution of the cameras isn't good enough to actually capture the fine text that I use on my monitor, which is a 57 inch monitor. So it's a very big monitor but it just doesn't quite do a good job of pulling that clarity through the cameras. But other than that, for just walking around throughout the day as I look around my room, as I walk around my house, I could wear it if I wanted to, although I tried wearing it in the dark the other day, and that is just a very dangerous thing to do. I was walking all over my cat toys. But no reason it couldn't use a, uh, a night vision in the future, I suppose. I, I suppose that's a possibility. It does have some IR cameras to try to track your hands in the dark, but yeah, it's not not the quality you get of like a, a night vision camera with a bunch of IR sensors or anything like that. And you said something the other day, you can uh, have it set so that even if you're walking around your house, if you're in a meeting, we still think that you're at your desk. You can pair the headset with a Mac. And then essentially you take your Mac screen with you as long as you have a wireless connection between the two. And then the sound from the Mac virtual desktop doesn't go through the headset by itself, so I had to throw on a pair of AirPods. But then at that point, I could walk anywhere, mostly around my house. So if I was in a meeting, I was able to get up, walk to the kitchen, grab a glass of water, 
and then come back to my desk. So it did allow me to kind of be a little more productive. Uh, at the end of the day, I don't know how much more is productive it is versus, say, like an iPhone, because usually I'll do that like on my phone. Um, but it definitely was an interesting experience. I sort of see it as a potential in the future when like everybody at a concert venue is wearing it. And so everybody has a first row seat. Everybody has sound attuned exactly how they want to hear the kind of an environment where you can envision it now that you're wearing it. <laughs> yeah. And I, actually, I mean, they've had they've had these in the past again, like with the MetaQuest. The technology has been around for what, seven years or so where we have that capability. I could definitely see it. Apple has a couple demos in here of the immersive video where essentially it's a 180 degree field of view. So if I turn my head left, right, up, down, I'm literally still seeing what's in front of me and it's very immersive. So for sure, I could see that. I know that people have talked about, the NBA has been talking about doing this for a long time and as somebody who likes to watch sports, I'm definitely looking forward to trying to see what's it like in the front row? What's it like four rows up? So I'm really hoping to have that experience. I think it's definitely a possibility, although I also think that it won't replace the the feeling of actually being there. Well, it might get very close. Yeah, really interesting. So what else should we know about it? So I think that it really depends on your use case. I think that if you are somebody who's just consuming content, it's really, really good at that. All the apps that you can install generally are the iPad version of the apps. So it's really fantastic if you're going to watch a movie. For instance, I have a son with disabilities. I have to watch him at night sometimes. Putting this on, I can still see him through the cameras, but I can throw like a gigantic movie on the wall and watch that at the same time. And I can move it around the room as needed. So as I need to help him, I can literally, they use this gesture of pinching my fingers and I can pick it up and move it around. So that way I can still help him and see the, the movie I'm watching. So that's really cool. So for content, I think it's amazing. I think that there's possibilities in terms of having it make you more productive. For me, again, having to write code, like I mentioned, I have a gigantic monitor. I use that to see lots of code. I could see this as a good way for having portability of a variety of screens. I've tried running like Visual Studio code through the device, through the browser to actually interface with my system. And that works reasonably well. So I could definitely see that being something that people would want to do in the future. And it would make them more productive in certain cases, I don't know if it will replace like a nice big setup, although I think it really depends on where you like to work. I was going to say, if you really like to work in a Starbucks, this might give you a lot more desktop space, but then you're wearing this on your face. So I don't know how comfortable people will be with that. Yeah, that's interesting. Has your son tried it? I think they said it should be for people who are 13 and up. So my son is nine right now, and he has, uh, because of his uh, disability, he actually has a small head. So it doesn't actually fit on his head. I did try to just place it on his head just to see how it would fit. But I don't think it'll work for him. My wife tried it. She actually found it to be a very good experience. She really liked being able to see animals up close, which is one of the immersive videos. You get to see baby rhinos and baby zebras up close. So that's a fun thing to do. So again, definitely for content creation, maybe for productivity in the future. So, Tony, you are also, uh, in addition to being a software architect, a podcast host yourself. So tell us a little bit about that podcast. I host a podcast called Code Together, and we typically try to talk to developers about things that are going in technology. Obviously, right now, AI is really hot. So we're focusing a lot on different AI topics around what's coming this year, how people are using AI in the field. We also have a program that we're very proud of at Intel called the Intel Liftoff for Startups program, where we support a lot of early round startups who are trying to bring new technology to market. So I talk to a lot of those entrepreneurs to help understand as a developer, when do you decide to go from being a developer to being someone who's actually creating a startup and trying to be an entrepreneur? Tony, I want to do a big reveal. Let's compare your face to the avatar. <laughs> All right, sir. Absolutely. So here we go. I have to take the strap off, and it, there's two straps, but I can. I've got the single one, so I pull that off here. And then the problem is for everybody watching, I can't see anything without my glasses. So then I have to put my glasses on, and you guys can see whether or not this looks like the avatar or not. I don't know. What do you guys think? We've now switched mics because I think you were pulling in through the microphone. Of the device, yeah. Yeah. 
Yep, absolutely. So the mic has integrated sound and microphone. So again, you can use it for FaceTime calls, etc. The one interesting thing is that the sound sounds very good coming out of the headset. It sounds crisp, loud, but anybody in the room, it's almost muted. Like if if I had was watching a very loud movie, for instance, if I was watching a Disney Avengers movie or something like that, it sounds really loud because the speakers are right by my ear built into the headset. And my wife, who's sitting three feet away from me, can't even tell what I'm watching. She can hear that they're sound, but she can't actually make out what it is. You don't have your glasses when you're wearing the thing. So is it correcting your vision or are you just not seeing very well? One of the curious things I had as well when we were talking about this release of technology, and I was wondering if they did some type of fancy optimization to try to make sure that the pixels were out of focus enough for my prescription, which would have been super tricky. But what they did actually is they have a little magnetic lens that goes in each side of the headset and it just snaps in place. So you actually have to give them your prescription in partnership with Zeiss, Apple actually gets a pair of lenses created and shipped to you and then you just kind of snap them right into the headset. Or I guess if you wear contacts, you just don't do anything. You just wear your contacts, right? You can do it with contacts. The only tricky thing there is there's a bunch of different fits. So again, if I take this apart, you'll actually see there's a front facing piece here that actually rests against your forehead. And when you take out your contacts, you might need a slightly different size of this front pad to make get the, the same experience. So because the lens is actually, it'll be hard to see here, but you can see the lenses actually add a little bit of depth, right? So this is the lens of the device. And then I snap on an additional lens on top, like going to the doctor when you get your eyes checked, right? And they ask you to one or two and they flip the thing around. That's exactly what we have here. So then you might need something different on the front, which is a little bit tricky, but still it was a good experience. Very interesting, Tony. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Camille. Never miss an episode of In Technology by following us here on YouTube or wherever you get your audio podcasts. The views and opinions expressed are those of the guests and author and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Intel Corporation.